And we're back with the second installment of this reading of Scan Ranger vs. Jetman. <clears throat> when we last left off, the heroes had all been blown up. Will they survive? I hope not, but since I was only less than halfway through the story, they will. Back at Sky Camp, Commander Odagiri witnessed the destruction. Mina, everyone, get up, get up! Who does Mina? Professor Alex ran to the struggle. Wait, this is a different scene. Rangers, Rangers, good lord, what happened? <clears throat> Meanwhile, the four Jetmen villains returned to Byrock, their outer dimensional home base, upon their next move. That was too easy. I still wanted to get a piece of that other yellow suited being, said Grey. This is mean I, I claim rulership of Byram, does it not? He does have a point. We did agree that Rebel was the first to eliminate the Jetmen rules over us, said Shran. Ha! said Redigate. It was my idea to use the bomb. My suggestion. All you did was aid me in finishing the job. Besides, suddenly, without warning, an explosion hits the four fire members, knocking them off balance. Out of the fog came the four remaining four villains from the Time Vortex. <clears throat> so were there more villains in the Time Vortex that died? Black Org, Vixen, Ugg, and Anarch Key. Who are you? demanded Maria. Fascinating, said Black, said Black Org. It seems that we've landed in no into another dimension. Into really, and the natives are speaking a strange tongue. May him overlord adjust his speech in order to understand what we were saying, but it's not strange to him. In Japanese, he introduced himself. Okay, I'm gonna try and say his next part in Japanese best I can. Waganawa, a black orc tono, mayhem no shihaisa, waganakamatazi towatasi mirai no time to get you time slip to so stay. A daikon ranto konton uchu osku. Okay, I have no idea how accurate that was, and if you're wondering why my voice changed, sorry, that at since the American setting was Darth Vader, I decided his Japanese setting would be Takeshi Watabe, who voiced a lot of villains in Tokusatsu during the 80s and 90s. I suggest you look up who he voiced. But we didn't come here to do that. We came by Ag, whispered Ag. Shut up, Ugh. Key interrupted him, elbowing him on the side. We have come to your ship and asked to join us. Ask to join us in this glorious quest of a conquest of the universe. Black Hole continue. Sorry, Tin Man, but this is our ship. We are the ones who are planning to conquer the Earth and then the known universe in no particular order. Who said that? Tin Man, why you arrogant whelp? I'll... Just a moment, Black Hole, said Radigay. You say you're from the future, right? <clears throat> Now, Tran was right. This is our ship. This is our ship. We know it better than you would. And we've our own agenda. We've... We have... That'd be better in this context. Destroy these protectors of that planet. Jetman. Now, as you see on the screen, we have already seen it. What protectors? said Vixen. I see nothing. What? They're gone. Looks like you've got to hand them down again, you know? said Tran. They cannot be too master of this ship, stranger. said the Count. Wait, it was trying to last said something. If you want to take over this crap, you have to go for us first, do so. Ready to become roadkill then, said Key, preparing himself to attack. No, Key, replied the armored overlord. I'll deal with him. Black Organ Radigay squared off, with Black Org using his metal staff, which is one word for whatever reason. Radigay wielding his sword. The Count charged at the overlord, and Black Org disappeared. Radigay, Mayo was about to assist him, but Grey held her back. Mixon held Ugg back, Ava out to defend Black Org. But our Lord's fight, we can handle him. <coughs> Black Org clobbered Radigay in the face with his staff. The horn faced alien retaliated with an energy beam. He attempted to slice him in two, yet Black Org teleported at the last moment. And the Mayhem member threw a punch at Radigay, knocking him two, two, the other three. He got up slowly. Great fight. Oh, well, you're the one to spend on sending out other fighting team against us. Radigay snarled. Well, we'll destroy them as I shall destroy you. How did Radigay leap to that conclusion? There's literally no evidence. Hold, Count. I never fight you, do you say? That means the scan rings are here too, said Key. Ah, then you're not a sponsor for those strangers, Ben. The ones we swore to destroy. Jet Manor are our mortal enemies. If they escape, why are we fighting each other, Lord Blackhawk? True, true. We can arrange them to smash both teams in this time period. What say we arrange a temporary truce before you can work out 
your feud later. What for? Oh, is he torn to? Oh, ooh, yes, an infused life victim. Destroy the scan rangers and the world is ours. Destroy the dead men and the world is ours, laughed Tram. Fair deal, then. We shall be the ones to claim this mud ball first, said Keith, walking slightly up to Maria, putting his arm over a soldier. After that, babe, perhaps we can share an entire continent to rule alone. Oh, God. Oh, do you do know she's in a relationship? It, whether or not, regardless of whether she has amnesia or not. Oh, Maria then applied a judo throw over her shoulder. Key landed on his back with a hard foot. Once again, Anak Key went out like a bitch. Well, agree to this. For now, she said. And for the record, idiot, I'm nobody's babe. Gray walked Maria and stepped on Key's hand. Key gnawing the pain. <laughs> How? What, having your foot stepped on? Goddamn hurt. Hand stepped on with a foot. Goddamn hurts. Said to himself. Now that's my kind of woman. Meanwhile, get used to this because there's more of these interludes to come. And that was not me talking. He literally had that written down. Back at the Jetmen's home base Sky Camp. But it wasn't it Sky Base a few, a few paragraphs ago? Uh, the two remote teams are all in the infirmary. The scan mains on one side, the jet men on the other. Vim was the first to wake up in a seemingly day state. Well, what? Rari. BC woke up as well as the other eight team members. Japanese music. I must be dead. I hear an angel singing. At once, both advisors, Commander Odagiri and Professor Alex, both walked into the room. Welcome back to the land of the living, everyone. Shogun said her native language. Foreign scan rangers, Vin, Tony and Nick, was was trying to understand what he said. BC then interrogate the words in English for free. Chokan, what's going on? said Ryu, speaking for a Birdman team. team. Oh now you call it the Birdman team. Oh, wait, no wait, that's what never mind. Okay. Hey, I'm glad that they, he has BC actually explaining these words to be characters that logically shouldn't understand Japanese. Because I think one of the main issues with Super Sentai vs Power Rangers, as far as I can tell, because I barely read much of it before it was taken down, though I do have a downloadable copy, is that they just have the Power Rangers characters speaking Japanese with no real explanation. You're under a spell by some strange gas. After explosion, it knocked all of you out and also brought you back to normal. If there was gas in that, it would be explosion. How are they even still alive? Aye, they should at least have severe injuries. <laughs> In the process, you mistakenly attacked these foreigners who were trying to help you. Ooh, another female commander, said Carrie. Another female, replied Guy. Cool. Rory was about to approach Alex. She defended herself, twisting her arm. Don't even think about it, she replied in Japanese. Uzakena! On behalf of the Zip Edma and team, I apologize for what had happened. The crew didn't realize there were others around the world fighting to protect the Earth from evil, said Chokan Odagiri. Well then, Commander, said Alec. It's only appropriate that we resolve our differences since we're here to fight the same cause. I agree with you, Hakase, Alex. Jetman, I would like to formally introduce you to my old colleague's battle team, Aegis Sentai Scan Ranger. The Scan Ranger and the Jetman proceed to formally greet each other. Wait, when was it established that Alex and Aya were old comrades? Colleagues? Vin, Ryu, and Ryu, and Nick, with one and too many there, and Guy shake hands. Our Tony and Kaori and Kuni and Maita bow in Japanese fashion. Okay, why why is Tony bowing? I can I, mean, I can understand why Kunio would do it, since he is supposedly Japanese. You may have BC and Akko bow also, but there's someone hesitant to say anything. Ryu Tendo, it's truly an honor to meet you. BC has told me about your legendary skills from the future, said Vin humbly. Arigato, he replied. So guy, how does it feel to be a ladies' man? A player, has not it? Player? Spuds? Guy wasn't aware of the American slang term for ladies man, aka a playboy. Our we always got better acquainted, BC and Akko somewhat stare, waiting to see who will speak first. A man named Blue Scanner, I thought his name was BC. Like Cunio, we're already familiar with the Jetman team, watching him on TV years ago. The show was actually one of his favourites, yet he kept it to himself. He clearly didn't, since he, he was just talking about it before the battle earlier. So, Akko-san, BC broke the ice. How do you like being a dead man? I think it's cool, but I've made it first in order to do so. I wanted to get paid for it. Oh, really? 
Nick and my other team made one of the same thing, yet he was the hardest to bring on our team. We gotta be careful, because on occasion he reacts without thinking. Says the guy who's, uh, who's, just, who's while trapped in an exploding Megazord, rather than flee to safety, decides to carry on the fight. He was beat, he said that, Nick slapped on the back of his head. Ed, what? He responded. He paused a few moments, thinking how attractive Blue Swallow was. Okay, even if you weren't from a different time period, you are an undergraduate in college, and she is a seen, she is a second, she is in high school. I assume she's a second year, since all protagonists in school in Japanese media in their second year. Yeah. Okay, now I've lost my place. Same time, Akko thought the same about BC. Oh god. Gee, she's cute, thought BC. Gee, he's cute, thought Akko. Enough, BC decided not to hold back, lest his emotions totally overwhelm him. Yeah, because then he'll, he'll probably punch her in the face and angrily storm out. Out. Let me just cut to the chase here. Akko san, are you seeing anyone now? Uh, no? BC then leaned his head on her shoulder. Well then, why don't you and I go steady? Dude, you are from seven years apart. I can push BD's head back the opposite way to hit the headboard. Okay, that's not funny, but it is karma for. Baka, idiot, get off me. What do you think you're doing? Kunio walked over to BT. So, how did it go, lover boy? Here, no sweat, she's just playing hard to get. No, BC, she isn't. From a distance, she found that BC of arms crossed, yet as Akko turned away, she slowly grinned. Wait, she actually is playing hard to get? Oh fuck. From a distance, Eileen finally made her appearance. Appearance, if she's from a distance, they can't see her. Tracking remains the Lycari amulet piece. A bright, eye blinding light described eye her entrance. Wait, what is this blinding light? What? I, how is it able to describe anything? Jetman and the Scam Rangers team, team, must outside set out a promotion. Greetings, Sentai teams of the present and the future, I announced. My name is Eileen. I've come from the future. I've chosen you ten for the sole purpose of saving your world and the universe. What? Wait, only this world? What about the Scam Rangers world? What's going on? Asked Karian Nihongo. Stick to one on the extreme. Dorsta. Eh. You're asking me what's, who's bad or what's happening, girlfriend? I have no clue, replied Tony. Looks like a young Irene Cara, and very pretty debut, Ruth said Vin. Irene smiled, yet Vin was unaware of the flattering statement he made about the magical woman. He replied, Irene Cara? Idol? Said she was an idol singer back in America's future, said BC. He, he hesitated and realised that Vin was speaking to his red counterpart in Japanese. He's all, was he hearing things? I, I can understand her, Ryu said. So, I can, I, I hear you speak English loud and clear, but how? Who said that? A simplistic spell, Ryu ten, Tendo Ryu, Vin Harlock. I've read the spell so you can hear each other in your native language. Oh, so is that how we did it in Super Sentai vs Power Rangers? Somebody cast a spell? L. Red Hawk can interpret Red Scanner's English. And Red Scanner can understand Red Hawk in Japanese. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure interpreting and understanding are not the same thing. Wow, said Writer. Pent is close by the city area where Yuki Guy had sold it to a club owner. What pendant? asked Chokan. I leave to the team's description of the Amulet of Laikari. The Amulet of Laikari is a priceless jewel 75 years in the future. During the Space Wars, it was stolen by the Ran Chaos Empire. I just thought, why is, where did the Ran come from? Since I um, um, since it's Con Ron. Alright, yeah. Never mind. It was told to possess unlimited absolute power to control the universe. Yet during a struggle, the jewel was torn in half. Half, and it is useless unless both pieces are found and reconnected again. Once together, the rightful owner will bring peace throughout the galaxy. The process will also balance the space time space continuum. It also has the power to bring others into new dimensions. So that was it, said Alex. That's what bars old here to this time period. No, you mean this universe. Now the question remains, how do my team and I get back to our right time? It would be very difficult to say, Professor Alex. Your piece still resides back in your t Oh, I'm, I'm with a dual activate itself almost every hour for a few seconds. We must retrieve the other half in order to get you and your team back. 
My magic is limited and we own, have only 28 hours to turn you back to the future. Why 28? And if we fail, said Tony, not only you'll be... You, not only you'll be stuck in the past forever, but the space-time continuum will collapse and the universe will cease to exist. This the universe, but what about the other one? In layman's terms, said BC, if you end the world as we know it. Well, you'd better get going then, but I've read this before twice and I know you won't. I have my time running not far from here. It seems unless I could get it fixed, I didn't apply. My facilities to have the tools you may need, said Shokan. I can assist on the technology and match the necessary parts. Nick can give you a hand, Shokan, said Alex in Japanese. I'm not going to repeat that since, as Eileen said, she's mixed it up so... Oh, to the Japanese characters, the, the Americans are speaking Japanese, and to the American characters, the Japanese characters are speaking English. He's a computer brain of a group, and he's willing to help in any way. Thank you, Hakusei Alex, Shokan replied. Wait a minute, Profess, said Kunio surprisingly. I mean, all this time you could speak Japanese? Life is full of surprises, I responded in Nihongo. Seriously? <laughs> you never told us that. You never asked. Who is speaking? Two teams go out together in pairs to get better acquainted, save Nick, but they help Eileen and Togan to fix it out in the scene. Ben hung out with Rio to nearby park, using this as an opportunity to perhaps trade battle secrets. Yeah, shouldn't you be looking for this Lycari crystal? I don't know. Oh, I think fraternizing should wait. Hey, yeah, the only thing Red Hawk had on his mind was Rie. Rie, who's she? Your girlfriend, I take it. Yes, I. Yes, I usually don't share about that favorite down the Earth ship. No, it was the Sky Base. But I trust you. I was one of the original members of a selected team of Sky Force members, including my girlfriend, Rie I. Oi, you have to stick to an experiment codenamed the J Project. Bim was fascinated by obviously listen. J Project had us subjected to something called Birdonic Waves, and he spells it Birdnick Waves. It was an excruciating experience, taking all that energy. As soon as the next member was to be energised, that being Rie, since the narration didn't state it, she was, and despite her surname literally being blue, she was meant to be the white one. Oh, and I think the universe was trying to course correct it by interrupting her. Group called the Dimensional Fleet Virum. No, it was the Back Dimensional Party Virum. And attack the base. This guy, who you've probably met already, Count Radigay, claimed the Earth for his own. The aliens destroyed the Earth ship. Not before I. I. Iro K. Ryu? Vin tried to contact him. I'm sorry, Vin. Not before Ryu was sucked into. out of the space out of the decompression from the explosion. Took and I was. was. wrong word there. The only one to survive the attack. Main Birdonic waves, however, have spread throughout Japan, hitting four civilians, as you know them now. They're not something, a hotshot bike rider? That guy, he wasn't a bike rider, he was a gambler slash amateur saxophonist, his slash ladies man. And a country farmer, that'd be writer, a rich girl, that'd be Kari. Finally, a high school student, Akko. The rest, as you Americans say, is history. Wait, how do you know what is probably a catchphrase? <laughs> Sorry about your go, buddy. Buddy, anything I can do? No, Vin. Thank you anyway. It's my responsibility to make sure the team stays focused. There was even another incident where Karen was almost lost to us forever. Vin pondered on when that had happened. Why is Vin thinking? Perhaps Vin thought he'd ask Cuneo or BC about the fate of the Jetmen, possibly the other. And to make matters worse, why woman you saw, Maria, almost eerily looked like Ree. Yeah. Whoa, that's some wow, that's some story, man," said Finn. But you have to remember that in any type of war, you have to make quick decisions. So basically, fuck your girlfriend. <laughs> Believe me, leaving the scan range isn't a walk in the park either. Not trying to be cold, buddy, but being emotional in the midst of battle in one moment will mean you're doomed. As far as women go, view that's my weakness, eagerness. And yet, when attacked by when offered a fleet of pretty women in one episode of the Fix Proper, offer you survive. I would no you were the only one to resist. If, okay. There was a time Cooney and I was hypnotised, was, hypnotised by Commander Vixen, and I came close to being a father of her children. Editor's note, the story in detail happened in Scan Ranger Episode 3, VJ. Victory in Japan? And also, editor's notes only work, oh, it's don't really work that well if you L in text. X, in comics maybe. 
I personally, I'd like to see someone try and work one into a TV show or something that acted out. But Nick was able to snap me into consciousness, and there's no capital letter there. I heard it's a space and a small lowercase b. There's also the time where our arch enemy named Blackhawk fought the team. Short and sweet, he beat his hands down. How is it short and sweet? It was demoralizing, I didn't leave the way I was supposed to. First threat of Alex snapped me out of it and got the team back together again. Believe me, I made my equal share of blunders as leader too. To suck it up, learn from your mistakes, and move on. On. Scan range episode 4. And as it mentioned that and that in the episode proper, they didn't actually do anything to drive Black Org off. It was just, he only beat him up as a cover for his real plan, and once that was succeeding, he withdrew. Ew. And as one other reader put it, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you, Vin. Me and the rest of the team sans Nick. Oh, good God. Redundancy. Get the opportunity to talk themselves. I know this is, go this is going to be a pain, I guess, sans a BC. I couldn't help resist. The ba um, he I couldn't help resist. I'll let you figure out what's wrong there. Bad, bad experience you have with that ramen monster. Writer Crinsey recalled being a victim of Noodle Jiggins' corrupted ramen. Ah yes, the only monster we eat pop from Jetman anyone talks about. Not the hairdryer ayah who was a big softy. Not the teddy bear who was ultimately very very sympathetic. Ethic. Like not even the two demons. It's always the noodle monster. Monster. Unio remember as Joe started to sing Yoki no Akko chan song. No, I am not going to sing it myself. What's with Ryder? asked Tony. What happened with Ryder? asked Tony. What happened was that when someone ate a cup of noodles, it got to the mind and makes everyone go crazy. Why did it switch tense? Poor Ryder in such a rage wanted to fight with Ryan, he had to be chained to his seat. Who was saying that? What about the Scan Rangers? asked Howie. Who did you have to fight? Bell and Group Mayhem and Styver creatures. They're part machine and part animal, sometimes part human. What about you, BC? asked Echo. I'm sure you Americans have some crazy monster battle, which almost the weirdest. Why is this a different paragraph? Girl gangster. <laughs> like the classic criminals of machine gun, like Al Capone? The guy? Not quite, said Tony. In that time, the music business had a style of music called hip hop. Most of that brand of music was creative and catchy. A branch of hip hop was called gangster rap. It was a genre of music that was mostly violent, used foul language, and degraded women. If you run into any music like that, if you ever go to the state, I suggest you stay away from it if you know what's good for you. Okay, hey, what the hell was this? This whole oh, rant against gangster rap. I mean, it, it doesn't offend. It barely offends anyone. Well, anyway, it's a BZ. This monster attacked the town and framed one of my classmates for a crime he didn't commit. It was loaded with a machine gun that's made a high press of graffiti paint. He's broken right on wreaking havoc in the city until the scan ranger crew stopped him. And that let other let's read I was telling you about called him the greatest monster in the thing. Even though it pointed out that he that he's utterly racist and appears immediately after a lecture on racism. And um, these scanner continue to tell the tale to three jet men. Why? They're pretty sure you've told them everything. Back could have been Byrock. The two villain teams began their next move. Out of General Ugg's scabbard came out Bite. The annoying spider robot with an even annoying squeaky voice. And even annoying. As I mentioned, the voice he specified for Bite was Steve Urkel. No, really. Since I haven't seen in Family Mass, I'm instead going to be doing 90s Sonic the Hedgehog. I listened on to his master Blackheart. Oh, it seems that... It seems that not only we have a chance to eliminate the Scan Rangers, but it's an opportunity for us to change our destiny by taking over this planet in the past to conquer this damn site called Japan. The rest of the world shall follow, after which it shall be crushed beneath our feet. Okay, but there's a problem. If you conquer Earth before you show up, up you won't want to conquer it when you get there in the future, and thus you'll never go back in time and never conquer it. Wait a minute, at some point in the future, you'll come to where I think it's worth conquering, go back in time and conquer it. It and blah, 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 blah. paradoxes make my head spin. Yes, my lord, it's a vixen. But we do have an obstacle in the way. The Scun Rangers? That's the dim witted ugh. No, you don't. Step the overlord. You have a group of his sight on this ship. Viram. Why don't you destroy both teams? But your four fools shall be eliminated. 
shall be we, not Byron, who shall be masters of this earth. Uh, Key, can you locate any metal in the immediate area to create a cyber creature? Well, my lord, if we don't have access to our Nebletopian Nebel technology, I'll try, but you may not have too much time. Make time. Time is on my side. Ah, yes, it is. <laughs> I have no idea what you must be well something soon off. We'll create a way to destroy. We'll create a way to destroy the Jetman and most so-called Scan Rangers. Especially you who are called Red Scanner. When next to me, I'll crush you under my feet, said Raddy Gay to the other three members. And so there's basically no, no real transition there. Who will get the honors of drawing the teams out of hiding? Asked Tran. At the same time, he, the Count, Maria and Grey, set their sight on the same object down there. They saw a construction in sight and prepared to toss their dimensional parasites down to the object, which was a bulldozer. All at the same time, four parasites land on the scene. Um, they're called dimension bugs, not dimension parasites. And two, only one is needed to create a monster. The only time multiple requires them, those two demons I was talking about before got merged into one creature called com Combination. No, really. The construction worker was being shaken up. What the heck's going on here? Machine morphed. I thought you hated Power Rangers. And in the process, crushed the helpless driver. That's fairly canon typical for Jetman. Creature took form, standing on two feet, with one normal hand. The other was a double shoveled hand. I'm thinking of that monster from Go Busters slash Beast Morphers. Hence, the vine was pleased by a new blood curdling monster. Those are jigging. And to get things started, Count continued Radigay, I shall send a few green amp foot soldiers down to Earth to start an all-out riot. He he he! Anarchy! shouted Black Orc. Our competition has just sent out a monster to attack. Not a problem, my lord, Black Key. I've got what you need. Now a little bit of stolen energy. I can use an ammo that's swift, sleek, and can wreak a little bit of haggard. Touching the metal bars, the energy flowed within. Then Black Orc teleported the metal, what metal, and created a partial robot and half Jaguar. Cool Jaguar, these are your orders. Attack and retrieve. He held the picture of the Scan Rangers. A cyber creature catches the scent and roared onto the surface with lightning speed. Already he's a lot worse than Kuro Gangster. Back at Sky Camp, how are things going? Asked Finn. Alex choked out a Nick team by work on Eileen's time runner. Well, Professor and Commander Odegiri are double check the parts we need. The only problem we have, of course, is time. I I see through the point where Eileen had teleported here, there's a chip that was burned to a crisp. One small calculator chip is all it requires. I said Nick. What the hell did any of that have to do with anything? By the way, where's BC? Would you believe he's on a date? A date? At the time that we're trying to get back to our year? The dude's fooling around and going to take the, paint the town red? You see, this is why Nick is my favorite of the Scan Rangers. He's the closest Thing to someone with a straight head. That's funny. Is it with the little jet girl? Yes, I and your friends, friends, hanging out together, said Vita. Whose idea was it anyway to suggest this to them? Finn, said Alex, are you responsible? I have nothing to do with this. I'm serious. How did I know a laughing boy has a seeming crush on Blue Swallow? It's not like they're eloping or something like that. Besides, it was a dead man's commander's idea. Kunia looked puzzled for a second. Wait a minute, we're talking about Chokan here. The same Chokan man is no nonsense, taking no prisoners, but kicking woman. I think there's an A missing there. Eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, uh, but king woman who rules a task force with deep respect. Same Chokan who can take out Ryu and Guy outright in hand to hand combat if need be. Come to me, is it not the same woman that our legend knew about? You're a problem, my suggestion, young man! Chokan implied to Kunio sternly, as long as she could. Meet the back on flight. Ah, uh, no, ma'am, not at all. Cool, we can then. Suddenly, the emergency siren goes off as the Jetman and Scan Rangers run to the console. They witness the Green Am smashing cars and terrorizing citizens of Tokyo. What's going on? asked Finn. Trouble downtown, replied Guy. He and Divine has sent out more of their cannon for to attack. Mina, everyone, who's this meanie? Keep invoking. Don't just stand there and watch. Go, shouted Chokan. Right, said and for Jetman crew. Perhaps we can be of assistance, Chokan, asked Kunio. Jetman will probably need some backup. I've heard these foot soldiers no problem, so Scan Rangers, get going. Right, said the Scan Rangers team. 
Wait, Nick, you you still have to stay behind, Alex. What? I assume Alex will step back. Sorry, Nick, but your command is correct, said Eileen. Oh, where did you come from? I know you want to help your teammates, but we have only 16 hours to go. Lest you be trapped, you'll be trapped here. It shouldn't take long to fix this microchip. Ah, I don't believe this. I need my strength out there. Those creatures don't look like pushovers. Sorry, Nick Stan, said Chokan. This takes top priority. Remember, the fate of the universe is in our hands here. It all depends on us now. Nick shrugged for a second and finally agreed. Shoot, all right, let's get going. You now be seeing Akko hang, hang out in his downtown Tokyo mall. Somehow unaware of the chaos ensuing, BC himself pondered the question like Kunio. Saying no nonsense, Cho can't suggest Abyss. I find it hard to believe. It's true, said Akko. She's a woman who's tough as nails like your professor, but deep down she really cares for the team. I'm hoping that one day we can spend more time together. The reality is, but it's impossible. Besides, you never told me what. Oh, besides, you never told me what your are your abilities as a scan ranger. Your way I was fine. It made it look like you was BC talking. In a nutshell, my power is my on my, my on my love for comedy movies. We scan range all chose from our desired specific movie genres, action and adventure movies, sci-fi, drama and so on. I'm also a theatre major with a minor in English. I'm hoping I can get you the opportunity to write good, clean comedy action movies. Side day, a lot of people get laughed at obscene, dirty jokes. Oh, I have very little tolerance for that. Okay. Hey. Hey, hey, this is another rant about things we all hate. Look, there are things, man, there are things I hate too. Go Kaija, jazz music, music, Kamen Rider Ryuki, but I do not spend whole paragraphs bitching about how much I hate them. I just say I hate them in a conversation and then move on. And if people ask why, then I'll correspond to them. My goal is to bring that all back. You want to bring back the dirty jokes? <laughs> Watching the classic movies like Glowing and Hardy, Avon and Costello. You could just hold a movie night then. Wacky Vases? Wacky Vases? What do you know about Deathly and Mudley? What do you know about that smart Alec Pooch who occasionally bites Dee Dee on the hand? BC does impress the Butley's famous snicker. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure Wacky Vases was imported to Japan. And suddenly both the blue team members get a call on my communicators. What's up, Bin Man? said BC. BC, Akko, we got trouble downtown. Those green arms creatures are causing a riot, said Vin. And BC, sorry to break your date, but we need you guys, said Ryo. Right, said BC. Akko, I'll show you how we get from point A to point B. BC has showed him a button on his film base. The fast forward button that teleports the ranger's destination at rapid speed. How did it work? she asked. Hold my hand. Akko does so as BC pressed the button, about to meet the rest of the team. Anyway, here we go. He said, the two met the other Jetman and um, three Scan Rangers. The Green Arms attacked the townspeople. Some strangled the citizens, some beat them to death. Okay, this is not canon typical violence for Jetman, let me assure you. <laughs> Most of the violence is explicitly off screen. Cute faces the cannon fodder who's about to get their rear end put in a sling, said Tony. Don't underestimate them, Tony, said Ryder. I tip when you think. There was no face rejects from a spider convention? I don't think. He almost gets hit by one of Green Arm's wrist machine guns. What wrist machine guns? You don't have negotiations, he said. You weren't negotiating. He, he, let's move into them, Rangers. Been led the scanner into the group. Isto, let's go, said Ryo, leading the Jetman. Local Japanese Sendai hold them, them, own during the battle, while Rangers need to have a slightly difficult time to beat them. Proof the scan Rangers suck ass. Meanwhile, a club owner who bought Guy's jewels at the jewelry exchange about to cash in the amulet piece. They could probably get at least 200,000 yen, easy. $180? That's not much. If not more, Miss Fink, he said. Suddenly a fuzz of lighting, lighting, came for the owner, and he saw the four violent villains. The man fell down as the sinister count approached him with a very wicked grin. Okay, that's a good place to stop for now. Now I'll see you again for the conclusion to this madness. Because let me tell you, the worst for us is yet to come.